Hi, Marta. Hi there. Uh, super cool to have you here. Uh, we have 30 minutes uh, for our great talk. Uh, first of all, I want to ask you, uh, could you tell us more about the Filecoin Foundation? Uh, what's the, the general mission? What's your ideas? What's, your, what's the product that you're building? Because uh, we heard a lot about the Filecoin, but uh, about the Filecoin Foundation, so we should, uh, we should have more information. Absolutely. Um, so Filecoin is a decentralized storage network. Our mission is to preserve humanity's most important information. Um, at Filecoin Foundation, we're the governance body for the Filecoin network, um, and we uh, sort of facilitate an open source governance process. Um, we also help to build the Filecoin community. Okay, okay. So uh, basically, Filecoin Foundation helps uh, helps to build communities around the world because uh, I believe it's the first time uh, for the foundation to be like to be present in Ukraine. Unfortunately, not uh, in offline format, uh, but it's the first time for Ukraine, right? Yeah, so Filecoin Foundation, you know, F Filecoin's really a global um, storage provider network. Um, we have uh, we have all sorts of information from all over the world, and we also have storage providers storing that information all over the world. So really, truly global. Um, and um, we we have also been doing uh, some work in Ukraine. I'm actually uh, Ukrainian by heritage, um, and. Oh. Yeah, yeah, right. M Marta, right? And um, yeah. <laughs> and um, so we have been really, um, really thrilled to get to to do some some work um, uh, on Ukraine in Ukraine as well. Uh, okay, I will ask you a couple of questions about the connections with Ukraine a little later. Uh, my first question will be about the uh, global internet, uh, where we are living, where we are storing our data, storing our money, assets, uh, where we have our communications, and so on. Uh, so. Uh, could you please tell us your view about the like um, I don't know general internet state? Uh, uh, so where where are we right now? Because uh, we we hear a lot of uh, problems with security. We hear a lot of problems with data storage. Uh, we are a little scared about the AI and supercomputers, whatever. Uh, so uh, what? How do you think uh, the the current state of the internet uh, and how the Filecoin uh, works with that? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, today's internet is centralized. So that means that the vast majority of the data that's on the internet is stored by three companies. It's stored by Amazon, Microsoft, and Google. So this really creates single points of failure. So you'll see these companies suffer blackouts and then large swaths of the web will go down for hours. And what that centralized internet model means is also that we live our lives through just a handful of corporations. And we really have no choice but to trust those corporations with our data. And they really have unilateral control over what we can do and say online. We also have to trust them to protect our data. Right. Um, and so um, what cryptocurrency does is it helps to provide an alternative. So cryptocurrency really creates the ability to program money. So you can suddenly send value across the Internet instantly and automatically with no intermediary. Um, and so the way that Filecoin works is we really use that programmable money concept to create this decentralized file storage network that's sort of like Airbnb for file storage. So you can actually rent out your extra digital storage space to people who will then pay you to store their files. Mm -hmm. And um, so that enables you to basically create an alternative to this centralized internet. It lets you create a decentralized version of the web where users are actually in control of their own data. Okay, uh, do you think, is it easy for a regular uh, internet user to, uh, to have this, uh, switch to the web3 world to the decentralized storage uh to to web3 uh tools uh and well, to to be a part of this world new economy yeah absolutely so you know j just speaking for filecoin there are uh hundreds of different applications that are building on top of filecoin that are um, making it really easy for users to be integrated into the web3 world in some cases without even without even knowing um so for like one example 
um, there's a application that's a lot like Dropbox um, that is built on top of Filecoin, where instead of your files being stored in a centralized way, they're stored in a decentralized way. Um, so that's one example where you may not even realize, you, you as a user don't even necessarily need to know that these things are uh, decentralized, but you can really avail yourself of the decentralized web. Um, we also have things like alternatives to for paying music royalties that are decentralized. So instead of having some centralized intermediary that collects a bunch of money and distributes it out to artists according to some algorithm they have, you can actually write a computer program that says, for every second of a song that I play on my computer, automatically transfer one one millionth of a cent to the songwriter and one one millionth of a cent to the singer, right? And that can happen instantly and automatically. And we have something like that that's building on top of our network as well. Well, we, we are saying a lot about the crypto adoption uh, and uh, personally to you, what is the adoption of crypto and Web3? Uh, how it looks like the new world uh, where, where it's already something that we are used to? What is for you? Yeah, you know, for me, I really, for me, the thing that really matters about this technology is its ability to protect um, uh, civil liberties. Um, and to protect users, to protect privacy and autonomy um, in, in, in the next generation of the web. Um, so that's really what I'm focused on is, is how can we really um, uh, protect users, protect people and individuals, um, and um, how can we put them in control of their own data? And so from, from an adoption perspective, um, it, it's not just about using cryptocurrency for me, and it's, it's not just about um, it's not just about, you know, finance. It's really about building this new generation of the web um, where people are in control of their own data. So it's much bigger than just adoption of cryptocurrency. It's adoption of the next generation of the web. So it's the next generation of ownership, let's say, right? Ownership I think that's... of your data, of your assets, of everything, and understanding uh, how everything works. Uh... Okay, uh, talking about Ukraine. Um, I know, uh, by the way, the guy from the speaker from Neem told that uh, about the Starling Lab uh, company. Uh, I know that Filecoin Foundation also works with the, the Starling Lab. Uh, for those who don't know, uh, it is the company that uh, helps to protect human rights in Ukraine. Uh, well, could you please, but, and, and more of that, uh, could you please uh, share the information about your partnership? Because I believe it's super cool uh, to, to know for our audience in Ukraine. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so Starling Lab is a project of Stanford and the University of Southern California. Um, and so um, what they're doing is they have a project to capture, store, and importantly, to verify documentation of war crimes, um, including war crimes in Ukraine, and to basically ensure that that evidence isn't lost, that it is preserved, and also to make sure that you actually have a cryptographically verifiable way of saying, yes, this evidence is actually authentic. Um, and so um, what, what Starling Lab did was actually um, submit evidence of war crimes in Ukraine to the office of the prosecutor of the International Criminal Court and explained exactly how that preserved evidence um, can show cryptographically that it was never tampered with, right? These aren't deep fakes and, and, and we, you don't have to trust us on that. You can actually see cryptographically that these aren't deep fakes. Um, and so um, that has been um, that has been built on top of uh, a number of blockchains, um, including Filecoin um, to, to verify and preserve um, that important data. Uh, talking about the deep fakes uh, and well, all all the fakes and scams. Uh, let 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 let's say a new way of uh, of new way of developing the Twitter. Uh, some someone say that uh, the best way uh, to to build uh, social media uh, with the use of uh, blockchain uh, is to make the uh, digital identity cards and to. Uh, to check the, everything, every information that you, that is posted in social media, uh, checking the, the deep fakes. So, uh, with the help of uh, digital identity, uh, which works uh, on the blockchain. So, what do you think about this? Uh, what do you think about this way to uh, fight with the deep fakes and so on? Yeah, absolutely. So, look, I think it's really, I think it's very compelling. I think fundamentally, right now, um, it, with the state of AI. 
I think we're really at the end of an internet where most of the content is human generated. And I think if you look at the internet in two or three years, or frankly, maybe maybe even faster than that, the vast majority of the uh, what you're reading on the internet, what you're seeing, whether it's on social media, um, you know, whether it's other other users, right? Whether it's um, uh, websites, I think the vast majority of that is going to be um, not generated by humans, right? Um, and we already, if you go on Twitter, right, you already have this very famously, you already have this bot problem, right? Like there are so many bots on Twitter, it's so hard to to deal with. Um, but right now, you can really tell what you know who bots are right like it's 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 a problem but you can at least figure out what a bot is versus what it you know versus who the real humans are um and so um i don't think that's going to be the case in in not very long right when you when you use something like chat gpt you can see how compelling it is and how easy it is um for that to seem like a real human so you know where does web3 fit in with that well so as you know sam altman um uh from OpenAI. Um, in addition to working on OpenAI, at the same time, worked on a different project called WorldCoin. Mm -hmm. Now, that project is about, is specifically uh, using this technology in order to give everyone a particular sort of, uh, you know, provable identity, like proof of human. I am actually a human. Um, and, you know, regardless of WorldCoin as a particular project, I think the, the point is, why was he working on both of those things at the same time? Because he could foresee the issues that are going to come about from AI um, with being able to prove that you're human. And so having the ability um, using these types of tools, right? Um, notably, WorldCoin use, uses blockchain technology um, to verify that you're human. I think it's hard at this moment in time to think about why that's so important. But I think if you project out into the future that AI creates on the web, you can see why it's so important to leverage Web3 technologies for, for that kind of use. So uh, you think the AI could be a really like threatening thing for uh, for human, uh, for deepfakes and for possible uh, problems with uh, uh, everyone have to identify themselves uh, with some kind of technology? Um, I think that's right. I think that that I think that it's not so. I think that there are um, there are a couple of problems. One is one is just literally knowing who's human, right? Like who are you talking to? Who are you interacting with online? And then exactly the second, as you said, is the creation of deepfakes, and that is exactly what the Sterling Lab project is doing, which is actually verifying that this, the videos you are seeing, the photos you're seeing, that these are cryptographically verifying, showing a sort of proof that of, of you know, where you can actually, you know, track and see on a ledger that these are, these have not been tampered with, right? And that's um, so, so, so important for things like evidence in a world in which deep fakes can be made instantaneously by anyone. Yeah, yeah. So, so the thing the some, some news to become deep fake is really like the the thin uh the seconds uh differ from 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 being the deep fake so everyone should understand that uh, uh even me posting something uh could be a deep fake if it's like uh, retweeted for a lot of times but it may be not true uh and this could be with the ai with bots as martha said um well could you could you say maybe maybe there are already companies that are working on uh well, fighting to preserve uh, information, well, the human's information in the in the internet that you are supporting, that may be working with you, because I heard there are there were a lot of cases of uh, such projects. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we um, there are a ton of um, organizations um, and nonprofits that are working with. Um, Filecoin Foundation and also um, the Filecoin Foundation for the Decentralized Web, or that are just building on top of Filecoin, um, uh, totally unrelated to the foundation, that are really using this technology for human rights use cases. Um, so one example, um, there's a, a nonprofit called The Guardian Project, which is building Proof Mode, which is a mobile app for eyewitnesses of war crimes and other things, right, um, that cryptographically authenticates 
the content that's captured on from your phone. Um, there's also the Human Rights Data Analysis Group, which is exploring how these technologies can be useful for storing and accessing um, very sensitive human rights data. Um, Witness is exploring how this technology can help eyewitnesses use this type of um, video verification to defend human rights. Um, we also um, work with Muckrock, um, where investigative journalists and reporters are preserving their, their critical primary source documents um, uh, onto, on the Filecoin network to make sure that there aren't these single points of failure where these, um, you know, where, where the, the documents could disappear, but instead making sure there are many, many copies that are stored all over the world. Um, so you don't have to worry about that very important uh, information disappearing. And then uh, another example, the Freedom of the Press Foundation is exploring using decentralized technologies for SecureDrop, which is a platform for secure document exchange and communication, um, for example, between journalists and anonymous sources. Um, so there's lots of different important use cases for this technology that is in the human rights sphere. Uh, well, let me ask about the projects that are starting to work in this field and uh, trying to uh, cooperate with you. Uh, tomorrow we are having the second day of our conference. There will be a pitch session for 10 Ukrainian startups. Uh, unfortunately, in Ukraine, the culture of startups uh, isn't really developed, but we are trying to uh, to help Ukrainian startups to to grow, uh, we uh, we are giving them uh, a space to 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 talk about them, uh, themselves, uh, to to gain some investments and uh, so on. Uh, basically, my question about um, how uh, how guys from uh, young crypto projects startups uh, can work with Filecoin or or Filecoin Foundation, how they can try to boost themselves uh well in terms of such bad market let's say yeah absolutely so um a couple of things so i think the first thing to say on that um is that the filecoin network is fully open source so anyone can be building on top of the filecoin network and we have hundreds of teams all around the world that are building and developing on the filecoin network um, and thousands of individual developers on github who are building on top of our technology and um, for some of the compelling use cases, um, we uh, the Filecoin Foundation does have a dev grants program. Um, so we do offer grants um, for building on top of the Filecoin network. Um, and so that's that's um, one way for for funding um, for that kind of um, that the, that kind of work. Uh, well, that's great. I believe uh, I believe it's super important for to to develop startup culture and to help startups. Uh, to grow because well the first of all it's like nations economy the second of all uh it is the economy and scale of our industry uh well that's why it's super important uh can i ask you about the the the, the general question uh well our our mission as a as an encrypted as a media uh is to boost web3 in ukraine well it's the the slogan of uh, this conference um well and this question we we're asking to every speaker um tell me please how to boost web3 in ukraine yeah absolutely um you know i think i i think that the um the there have been so many uh amazing projects already uh coming out of ukraine and i think you know we, at filecoin foundation has uh uh, an employee from Ukraine. You know, this is this is, I think, already. Um, I think Ukraine is already a big part of the Web three ecosystem, and I think in terms of of boosting it, um, the thing about this technology is it's very global. It's absolutely borderless, and um, it's fully open source. So I think um, there's all all sorts of things that that um, you can do. One thing I failed to mention as well um, is that another thing we do is we actually run. Um, well, we run and many other organizations run um, accelerators um, for new early teams. Um, and so um, encouraging participation in these accelerators um, that really help to get people the basics um, and, and get them off the ground is another um, important, um, important way to really boost um, Web3 development at an early stage for early stage teams. Using this opportunity, let me invite you to to become one of our partners during our pitch session, pitch session, because it's really important for uh, projects that are pitching to 
uh, to gain new contacts and these uh, opportunities. <laughs> I will send you information. Sorry, sorry for this. Uh, no, that's uh, great. Well, Fantastic. Uh, uh, let, 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 let's talk about the situation that we are having here in Ukraine, uh, but not from the, the bad side, but from the from the good side. Uh, after this uh, situation with the war will end, uh, how how are you? How, how do you see the opportunities of Ukraine to become one of the uh, Web3 hubs of the world because uh, I've spoke to many people from uh, from all around the globe and uh, all they say that they're looking at Ukraine at one of the possible uh, like volcanoes uh, where the uh, the new companies the adoption the a lot of new users a lot of uh, capital uh, well a lot of everything uh, will come after the world ends because because uh, the there will be a lot of attention to Ukraine. Uh, to Ukrainian uh, developers, to Ukrainian uh, well teams, uh, and uh, what you can say about the future? Yeah, I think looking forward, I mean, I think um, Ukraine is incredibly well positioned to be a leader in this space. Um, frankly, I think it already was a leader in this space. Um, I think there were already so many people in Ukraine who were working on these technologies. Again, I mentioned even on even on Filecoin, and um, so I think moving forward, you know, there is a lot um, around the world, um, a lot of movement in where uh, Web3 uh, teams are um, there. And, and frankly, because it's so global and decentralized, um, there is a lot of opportunity um, for people all over the world. Um, and I think Ukraine is extremely well positioned uh, for that and, and frankly was well positioned um, before the invasion as well. Well, yeah, uh, Ukraine was in the top five countries by the crypto adoption index and uh, really, uh, well, the first speaker of this conference, Vladimir Nosov, uh, the uh, co-founder of one of the uh, biggest crypto exchanges that are, uh, well, from uh, based not in Ukraine, but from Ukraine, uh, guys from are from Ukrainian team. Uh, he told that uh, from eight to 10 percent of uh, Ukrainians uh, has some assets in crypto uh, so they are really uh, understand what it is, uh, but a big part of the uh, of the guys who were well asked, uh, they think that crypto is a scam. Crypto is a bad thing. Uh, they have uh, their their uh, friends has uh, bad experience using crypto, uh, mostly losing money there. Uh, let's 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 uh, uh, Let's think about uh, the uh, the general understanding of crypto and the, the attitude to crypto. So, uh, how how can we help people who have negative experience or uh, like prejudice, thinking that uh, crypto is a scam, help to onboard in crypto uh, like softly? Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, for me, I think it's really important for people to understand that this technology is about so much more than just financial services. Um, so, you know, I think um, the, a lot of times the people's only exposure has been these sort of, um, you know, you hear about the, the, the some negative stories, right? And I think from the perspective of uh, an average person who doesn't really understand crypto yet, um, if you don't explain it, if you explain it in a way that is, you know, extremely technical, um, it's, it's hard for them to... Um, really uh, relate. And I think one of the things that is so great about the Filecoin network um, is that we this is really a technology that has nothing to do with financial services. This is entirely about creating this next generation of the web. Um, and and Filecoin is not just one use case of cryptocurrency. There are dozens of use cases built on top of Filecoin that are right the human rights use cases we were talking about earlier, um, but also many different business use cases that are very tangible that aren't just like, here's how we use this technology to make transactions, but actually here's how we use this technology to build an entirely new web to empower users, to protect civil liberties, you know, to... Uh, pay for music, right? All sorts of different um, different use cases. I think that's, for me, the most important message you can send about this technology. Okay, uh, and uh, to finish, could you please uh, give a couple of advices, maybe warm words to our community? Uh, because, uh, well, we, we really hope to see you 
uh, maybe next year, maybe a little later, I don't know. Uh, I hope as soon as we can uh, here in Ukraine. Uh, could you please uh, say a couple of words to our community? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I I uh, really am so, you know, as, as someone who is, uh, uh, has Ukrainian heritage, um, I just so blown away every day um, by the incredible um, uh, people in Ukraine, uh, by your incredible leadership. Um, and uh, I am just as someone in the technology space, um, you know, not just Web3, but the technology space, um, Ukraine was already such a leader in all of technology. Um, and I, um, I think Ukraine still is a leader in technology. Um, and I think Ukraine is going to continue to be a, a leader in technology for a long time to come. And I am, um, you know, so inspired to see um, the the amazing um, the amazing feats of the Ukrainian people, and and frankly, so proud to be um, of Ukrainian heritage every day. So so thank you. Thank you for such warm words. Uh, thank you for being here. Thank you for uh, for the things your company is doing for Ukraine. Uh, it was Marta Belcher, President and Chair of Filecoin Foundation. Uh, thank you, Marta. See you in Ukraine uh, when it comes to do it.